Hey everybody. So I wanted to share some thoughts that I had today on uh, Yom HaShoah. Today is Yom HaShoah, the day, the uh, Israeli public day of remembrance of the Holocaust, which today also would have been my 13th wedding anniversary. Um, so apparently on Yom HaShoah in Israel, where I got married 13 years ago today, um, you are not legally not allowed to get married on Yom HaShoah. And you know, back in that time when I got married on Yom HaShoah, I was 22 years old and my in-laws pretty much took care of everything. I didn't realize I was getting, having a wedding on Yom HaShoah. And had I been asked, I probably wouldn't have wanted to have a wedding on Yom HaShoah. What would I find interesting is the marriage didn't work out, but when the Israeli police saw the chuppah being set up outside on Yafo Street, um, I think it's at the uh, Jaffa Center, um, they basically made us take it down. And um, they explained when they explained to me that the reason they were taking it down was because you're not supposed to get married on Yom HaShoah. It's a day of it's a day to mourn the Holocaust. So the more that I think about it. I think to myself, <clears throat> it doesn't surprise me that the marriage didn't work. And if I had had a chance to actually pick my own wedding date, I never would have wanted to get married on Yom HaShoah. This is one of those things where I understand it's from the government, but I still think there needs to be a day to mourn and remember the 6 million Jews that we know about that died, the righteous people who died trying to save our lives. I think it's appropriate to have a day to pray for those people and to remember those people and remember the, the, what they went through so we can live. Um, the struggles that they, the Jews had when Nazis were occupying Europe are not struggles that we are even remotely familiar with. And um, I just feel like today is the day that um, we forever need to remember people who, you know, think about it. My wedding 13 years ago for a marriage that didn't last. So that wedding really didn't need to happen on Yom HaShoah. I would rather think about the weddings that were going to happen that didn't get a chance to. The people who were ripped away from their families that never got a chance to say goodbye. The people who, star who, who starved to death. The people who died. The people who lived. Think about the people today who lived. And how powerful the Holocaust really was. Not just on the Jewish people, but on the world. To think that Hitler was responsible, I heard uh, somewhere, for 48 million deaths. Such a senseless, hateful, awful war. And I think that we forever have to remember Yom HaShoah and give it the respect that it deserves. I am in full agreement that on Yom HaShoah, weddings should not be performed in, in, in Israel. I'm in full agreement. It needs to be a day that everybody remembers. And I understand now most Haredim or religious people will say, well, the Tisha B'Av, the day that we mourn the destruction of the of the of the Holy Temple, the base of Mikdash, is more fitting to mourn the Holocaust. I disagree. They were both major tragedies that were so big and so powerful that affected this earth on such a mag on such a huge scale. But I think they all need to be mourned, and I think the Holocaust is so big and so bad that it deserves its own holiday to remember the people who died and to think about the people who lived. And the guilt that some of them went through, the people who lost everything and had to rebuild from nothing. We have to remember that people walked out of Auschwitz holding on to their faith in God. No matter how this earth changes, no matter what this disease plague, I think it's a plague, really is. It's all from Hashem. And we have to remember that Hashem, when he talks to us, sometimes he talks loud. 
sometimes he talks gently. And to think that we're all in the house and people are upset and they're stuck with their kids and we're homeschooling and all of this stuff, we have to remember that this is a minor inconvenience. This is a minor inconvenience. This could be so much worse than what it actually is. And it doesn't have to be that way. I truly believe that God is talking to us so loud to the earth that we are on our way to redemption. I honestly believe the Jewish people are going to be redeemed. I believe the world's going to be redeemed. The concept of Mashiach isn't just to redeem the Jewish nation. It's to redeem the entire world. And I think that that gets very forgotten. And one of the things that I think is important to remember on, on Holocaust Remembrance Day is Judaism and the people who died for it and the people who live, who lived to teach it. And um, holding on to Judaism and holding on to God is what we have to do now. And only this time we need to educate as much people as we can, talk about what the redemption is, talk about the coming of Mashiach, talk about the, about Messiah, because Mashiach is coming for absolutely everybody. So this is really boiled down to a war of good versus evil. I believe the Holocaust was just the beginning of the war of Gog and Magog. Other rabbis will say differently. I've believed for many years that we're going to see the real life Gog and Magog in, 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 unfold in front of our very eyes. And um, I think of Yom HaShoah and I think of the Holocaust and the people who honestly thought that Mashiach would come right away and the hearts that were broken when he didn't. So I also feel that it's worth mentioning that these souls are de who are definitely, if there was ever any question, if the souls who died in the Shoah are in heaven, absolutely. It's fair to say that these souls also are praying for us and praying for our redemption and praying to God that we never have to go through what they went through and that we are spared from that reality. And when we take a look around and see how the world is changing, whether you like the president or not, you can't compare the president to Adolf Hitler. This is not a dictator who rose to power to murder people. We had a dictator literally raised to power with one intention to wipe us off the face of the earth, and we still won. These prayers from the victims and the prayers from the survivors are the prayers that we live on every day. Once a soul dies, the soul doesn't stop praying. Prayer is forever. Prayer is a forever bond between a person in their physical body or otherwise between the soul, the neshama, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu. These souls definitely pray for us in heaven. And I think it's important to remember those souls and to have a day to think about those souls and a day to cry for those souls. It's okay to cry on Yom HaShoah for the people who lost their lives. It's okay to cry for everybody who got in trouble trying to help the Jewish nation during the Holocaust. It's okay to cry for them. It's okay to cry for everybody on Yom HaShoah that suffered. It's even the Holocaust, even the survivors. It's a day to cry and to pray about, to pray for them. That every, please God, every Holocaust survivor should live, survivor should live and be well until 120. They should merit that. I pray for it. Because what these people went through is so profound and so heavy and so real. We literally never, ever want to see something like that happen again and happen to any branch of humanity. We have to also remember the Holocaust has been in maybe not as big, but it's been going on in different places of the world. Take a look at the things that have gone on in Sudan and Libya. There's uh, open slave trading. Think about the 
people who are trafficked, I'm saying there's real evil in this world and there's real evil that we have to pray away. It's um, a day to remember the suffering from any genocide, really. The genocide of this world has to stop. And um, we need to remember the people who truly suffered. And at a time where our world is being moderately inconvenienced, think about how much worse this honestly could be. Maybe in heaven, the heavenly, how do we know the heavenly decision wasn't to send humanity Ebola rather than the coronavirus? How do we know? How do we know that that was the fate we deserved and this is the one that we got? We don't know that. To take a look at how d uncomfortable everybody is right now, and you think about it's Yom HaShoah, it's the day that we remember and mourn real human suffering, real human suffering. What we are going through right now, except for the people who are sick, and may we pray for them to have an immediate and miraculous Rafor Shalema, that they should have an immediate recovery, please God. Things could always be far worse than they are. And we oftentimes get far better than what we deserved. I can't even venture to guess why the Holocaust happened. That is truly Hashem's business. I know that everything God does is for the best. And I have to believe that even when it comes down to something so horrific. Because I know that everything Hashem does is for is for the greater good, and everything that God does is for has a far greater purpose and a greater purpose. I pray that we never have to learn anything like that ever again. And it scares me when people don't want to take seriously Yom Hashoah. People like my former in-laws who planned a wedding without asking me how I felt about getting married on Yom HaShoah. On Yom HaShoah. I could have waited till the wedding was a Sunday. I could have waited till Monday. I didn't need to get married on this day. And it takes, I feel like my marriage wasn't blessed. And obviously it didn't work out. But I, let's just put it like this. I'll never get married on Yom HaShoah again. <clears throat> there needs to be time in our humanity so that we're able to learn when we reflect on horrific genocide. There needs to be a time where we're aware of it, where we know that there's a time to rejoice and then there's a time to cry. And Yom HaShoah, in my humble opinion, is a time to cry. And so is Tisha B'Av. There's nothing more sad in the world than the base of Mikdash that doesn't exist yet back on the earth. It's a severe loss to the it's a severe loss to the earth. We pray every day that the base of Magdash should stand from, that should be sent from the heavens to the ground and should stand again. We pray every day that God should reveal Mashiach. And we have to remember that we are not praying for this redemption alone. We are praying for it with the souls who died, who want to see the rebuilding of Jerusalem and who want to see the world redeemed. And at the time of Mashiach and why this is so important is we're talking about world peace on a level that's explained. I mean, who would want to live in that world? And we have to think about some people are vibing that there's a new world order come a new world order coming. I believe there is. And I believe that it's the Judaically prophesized messianic time. I believe this for several years. I will continue to believe this. And I also the, believe that on, Yom Hash, that on Yom HaShoah, that this is exactly the things, the, the exactly what these souls are praying for. And not only do we need to pray for them, but they need to pray for us. And I believe they do. If you take a look at the things that are going on in the world right now, while we have the coronavirus going on, we also have an, an increase in all sorts of activity 
all sorts of activity that could appear to be supernatural. On April 11th, there were 15 volcanoes in one day. For those of you who don't pay attention to that, that's not, that's, that's rare. That's not normal. There the amount of earthquakes that has gone on while the world is in quarantine has been on the uprise. Serious ones too, not little jiggles. Some that are on the Richter scale of 6.5. Idaho is seeing earthquake activity. Utah. These are places that don't get hit with, I, yes, they can have an earthquake, but they don't get hit with them that the amount that they have been in recent history. If you take a look in Africa, this is when I, it, it's clear to me God is trying to talk to us. The amount of locusts that are eating up the fields in Kenya. This is a biblical plague. This is going on at the time that we have global shutdown and quarantine from another plague, which people can't decide. Is it 5G technology? No. Is it a virus? It's a real virus. Whether it is 5G technology or not, it doesn't matter. It's here and it's killing people. And it's so clear to me that God is trying to communicate with the earth. You can't convince me otherwise at this point. And us again, we, Lake Michigan, you can see clear to the bottom. It would make sense that the earth would be calming down, not exploding all over the place. The tsunami warnings in Japan right now, these are real threats. And thus far, nobody in all of this uprise in natural disasters, nobody has been hurt in all of this uprise in natural disasters. And then you take a look at the virus. Lots of people have been hurt. Lots of people have lost our, have lost their lives. It's important at this point to start thinking bigger and deciding when is it clear that we are having visible divine intervention. And what I see going on is absolute visible divine intervention to take us into the messianic time. This is what I for sure see happening. Anybody who's even a little bit psychically gifted is sensing a war of some sort to take us into some level of their understanding of world peace. And when I say their understanding of world peace, everybody who's gifted, depending on their what they believe, really does affect the outcome of their visions. That's why it's very, very important to hold on to God and nothing else. Very, very important. But even the people, I'm saying, I've been hearing from all sorts of sources, people are literally seeing world, world peace. We're almost there. And we have to remember that there are people who died and suffered people who hid, people who saw their, we have to remember the all out atrocities that the Holocaust was from the Jewish people to the people who tried to save us for the innocent lives that got lost. Every single one of the innocent lives that got lost because of the Holocaust, because of genocide, we remember those people and pray for them and pray with them on a day like today. It would be preposterous to believe that the souls in heaven who died in the Holocaust are not praying to God for our redemption. It would be ridiculous to believe that those souls, where they are, with what they went through, are not praying to God from heaven to bring peace and humanity and redemption onto earth today. It would be foolish to think such a thing. We have to remember that this is about not only rem remembering them, but putting ourselves in a spiritual position where God forbid, we never ever have to go through that level of suffering and misery ever again. It's important beyond anything else that we never have to go through that again. And when you take a look at how many people the virus has killed, and then we have natural disasters and not one person has died, 
we are starting to see Hashem's hand. I've heard in many lectures on this. There were fires in Haifa a few years ago where one house would burn and one house would stand. And some of the soldiers went crazy and said, we're seeing the, we're seeing the hand of God. We are definitely seeing the hand of God. We are definitely seeing the hand of God. And I think it's a shame that it hasn't been made global news. The amount of, ac of activity of earthquakes, tsunamis, volcanoes that are going on in this world at a time that this is serious stuff and i think it's important to remember that these are small warnings these are small ways to remind us who's in trouble and who's in charge because there's no one other than God himself decides if somebody dies in a volcano, if somebody dies in an earthquake, or if somebody dies of the coronavirus. We can never forget that God is the giver and taker of life. No matter what influence or power, no matter what disease, no matter what affliction, God is the giver and taker of life and nothing else. No one else. No person dies without God's say so and that's very hard to see the good in god when you understand faith on that level that's why i do these videos because there's still everything that goes on in this world is from god and all of it is for our greater good whether we understand that or not and today I ask God to make sure that we all remember the suffering of our holy brothers and sisters and everybody who died, that we should never have to suffer that way again, and that those souls, that those souls be able to see redemption on earth. We have to remember as part of the res the part of redemption is the resurrection of the dead, the Tia Samason. It would be preposterous to believe that the, the Jews that died in the Holocaust probably wouldn't. I mean, they can't even say it with a straight face. Of course, these people would be resurrected from the dead. And we're waiting for this. And it's important to remember on a day of a day that we remember loss, it's also important to remember hope that we are waiting on a messianic time that grants us world peace and grants us a world like we actually believe in Judaism. The fundamentals of belief, one of the fundamentals of believing in Judaism is to believe souls can be resurrected from the dead. It's hard. It's hard to believe that. Sometimes I ask God, give me greater wisdom and insight and understanding so that I'm able to accept with perfect faith the things that I don't understand. But um, I think it will forever be something that I feel very passionate about. The Holocaust was the first topic I learned, the first Jewish topic I ever learned about. And I just knew that's where I needed to be. For those people who don't know, I converted to Judaism. And it was through study of the Holocaust that I was, that I became even aware of who Jews were. And... I have such a connection to the Holocaust that I wonder, is it possible that I'm a Gilgal? I wondered these things because when it comes to the Holocaust, it was one of the worst things to ever happen in the history of humanity. And I pray every day that it never happens again. For me, this is something I pray for pretty much every day, that God forbid the Holocaust should ever happen again to any to any group of people it's that it it's just it's it's that jarring it's that shaking it's that and then to think that we have similar evil that exists in the world think about the amount of people that are sexually abused think about the amount of people who are suffering in their own trauma we have to pray for all people who are suffering and for redemption of absolutely everybody. I want to wish everybody a wonderful night. 
and feel free to comment. Does anybody have any questions before I sign off? Okie dokie. Wishing everybody a great evening. Take care.